Hey guys, Eevee Master Gaming here, back with another episode of The Letter. I'm bulk recording, just so I can maybe have some things to do. Well, probably not, because I have like no friends here. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. She throws a wave over her shoulder as she rushes out of the office. The lunchtime bell sounds shortly after, followed by the chatter of fellow agents also hitting out for a much-needed break. Ordinarily, there's no need, there's no need for me to go out. But oversleeping didn't allow me the luxury of packing my own lunch today. If one considers taking an instant noodle cup from my pantry, packing a lunch. Time to make good on the promise I made to Becca, I suppose. Maybe invite Zack and Ash, too? In the end, only Becca and Zack could come. Ash, on the other hand, couldn't be reached. All of my calls went straight to his voicemail. He's at it again, right here today, gone the next day. Oh well, his loss. We've agreed to meet at a nearby cafe, the same one I freak I'm freaking with me. I freak it with Becca because it's cheap and they give away free bread around closing time. This place is a sketch. Well, it's not sketch, but it's old school. My bad. Quaint, a little old-fashioned, though it looks a wee bit out of place amidst the titties tall buildings. Titties. Good job, Ricky. The city's tall buildings, but we love it all the same. Much like its facade, the interior carries an antique charm to it. Sorry about that. Much like its facade, the interior carries an antique charm to it. Vintage art pieces in, row, in a row of shelves, but boasting an extensive collection of books covers the walls. It would have been nice to hang out here for hours on end, but even on a weekend, this place is still packed with people. Thankfully, Becca and Zach have already found our seats and are engaged in some casual chatter when I arrive. It's strange seeing the two of them without Ash accompanying each other. They've never been particularly close. Sure, they talk when they meet, laugh at the same things when there's something funny, but there's distance. The kind born purely out of differing interests. That or Zach's simply afraid of Becca. It's not impossible, and I won't blame him if he is. I have to be the tallest guy in our group, but everyone knows that it means nothing. That means nothing against Becca's temper. Even I am a little scared of her. So story updated. Does that no? That doesn't have anything to do with the journal. Wait, does it? Oh, it does. It does, okay. Oh, it's in pages. Oh. That's interesting. Okay. A waitress comes to take our order. On a normal day, me and Becca will order a hearty serving of their special vegetarian stovies. Zach takes anything with a good helping of meat, sausages, or potatoes in it. But today's a good day. Great, even. It's not wrong to indulge a little, right? Even the person jotting down our orders looks surprised at today's meal choice. She writes it, nevertheless, and leaves without a comment. Becca furrows her eyebrows, her mouth halfway open, ready to let loose with a string of reprimands. The glare she sends my way reminds me of the one I received from Mama when I punched a kid bullying my brother 18 years ago. Naturally, I never did it again after she made me apologize the next day. But Becca's far from being my mom. A small, sheepish grin is enough to turn the frown into a defeated sigh. Food arrives in the, mood, in the middle of a funny story from Zach, putting the rest of the conversations on hold as we are served our order. It isn't anything fancy. Oh, that looks fucking good. Hand-roasted sea bass, citrus-dressed asparagus, and a portion of mashed potatoes on the side. Or at least, that's what the daily special board says. I never did pay any attention to it whenever I came here, since they, since the price, whatever is written, way above what I'm willing to spend on food on a single day. Expectant grin breaks out of my face, except... If 
Becca only raises an eyebrow at me while Zack appears like he didn't get the punchline to another lame joke Ash made and is de desperately searching for someone to explain it. Oh, bummer. Maybe I should rephrase it. As the news sinks in, their expression goes from sheer bewilderment to utter surprise. That's more like it. Oh, that's where the grace comes from. It's out of hum. Although she's nodding, she gives the impression of someone who's heard something unbelievable and is still forcing her brain to absorb it. Did she think we wouldn't be able to sell it? Have some faith in me, Becca. Am I not your best friend or what? The words tumble out of my mouth before I can stop them. I've been trying to avoid bringing up yesterday's little spat. But judging from the looks on their faces, it seems they are too. In my stupid mouth. Should be into it more like, but I'm not gonna tell Becca about that. Knowing her, she'd only worry. I begin to gather their plates to my side, the food in each still untouched. A laugh almost escapes my mouth, the way Zach's expression quickly changes to disappointment. Because hands interrupts me just about to pull her plate closer to me. I allow myself to smile, genuine and uninhibited. It's strange talking about this with other people, even those who have known you long enough. But today, things simply feel a whole lot lighter with them here. Lunch passes in an enjoyable fashion. A laugh here, a playful jab there, but most of it is spent on catching up and telling stories about whatever has been keeping us busy these days. Something we couldn't afford to do the day before, taking into account what happened. Even Beck is surprisingly chatty. Is there something in the sea bass we ate? Zach, though, appears less energetic. While he's far from being the life of the party, he's definitely not the type to keep quiet in a conversation with his friends. Apart from a few inputs, he's been silent the entire time. If Becca notices...
pained expression crosses Zack's face, and almost immediately Becca retreats her inquiry as though the man's look is enough of an answer to her. I look between the two of them. Did I miss something? What happened this morning? Did I stumble on a big secret? This is why I don't like waking up late. Becca glances at Zack, her emotions unsure, eyes asking for his consent on the matter. Although there's a small desire to keep asking on my part, I don't dare voice it out. With Zack, it has always been better to wait, let him speak on his own. Becca, too, to some extent, although with her, explosions of temper are more common. In the end, he simply answers with a shift of his shoulder, gesturing for her to go on with the tilt of his head. Her tone rises in anger. It seems like she's the one slight, slighted, not Zack. Snicker escapes me, which I promptly stamp down as soon as she sends me a hard look. wasn't a question. <clears throat> My palm strikes at the table, setting the table where on top clinking against each other. I didn't even notice when I rose from my seat, but here I am, chest heaving, looking down at her in the same manner a teacher would at any unruly student. Beck is probably proud. I didn't mean to yell, but there's some things people like Zach aren't supposed to say. How exasperating. You of all sh people should know. An amused gleam in her eyes. There's a mu an amused gleam is in her eyes when I turn to her. What does she find so entertaining here? Help me here. Your friend's about to quit his passion for a petty reason. I haven't read what those people wrote about his work, but a few scathing words shouldn't be enough to discourage someone. I should know, after all, I'm... Whatever I'm about to say gets lost in my tongue as a flush of embarrassment blooms across my face. There's no face at all, only a poor imitation of puppy dog eyes, if you could call this one. That's all the answer I need from him. Sentimental as it sounds, there's fulfillment in knowing another person you know will take the same path you've walked. It's not like it's over for me, though. I still have time. I could still come back. Do my own thing. Do what I really want to do. Surely, once Papa recovers, I'm done with everything. Inside my bag, my phone buzzes unexpectedly, breaking the pleasant afternoon lull. The screen shows Rose. Hey, 
She states that exactly. She states that she already explains everything. Then out of the blue, she launches a long rant about how awful the state looks more streets. All of which she says in a single breath that I can barely keep up and make out a single word. I stay quiet, if only to avoid becoming the next object of her frustration, similar to Beckett in that regard. She's finally run out of things to complain about and stops. What she says next still is none of what I'm hoping for to hear from her. Just a quick mumble plea for me to meet the rights interior designer in her stead and... Classic Rose, she ends the call without even asking for my input. Oh, so we're fixing to head back to the mansion. Hmm. The sky is cloudless and the noontime sun is beating down on the hard concrete when we leave the cafe. It's far from unbearable, but it's enough to put most people in a fickle mood or make them vulnerable to catching something. No wonder we have staff members going AWOL lately, not to mention my boss's mercurial moods. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I want our usual cloudy weather back. For all the gripes about the unpredicted weather, through though the streets of Lexburg remain constantly busy. The hurry tapping of shoes against the pavement, and an inane chatter coming from the lunchtime crowd for the humid afternoon air. Uh, a small reminder with the things we still have to do, regardless of how much I want to return to the comfort of my bed. Back to briar reality for me. This act to a meeting with a magazine publisher featuring luxury houses and Becca to her lesson plans and books at home. But more than once, I catch her sneaking longing glances over to something to play at the shop window. Does she want to buy something? Maybe I can get it for her this Christmas. I turn my head to the last shop she checked out. A fleeting glimpse. The world stills. Oh, fuck no! Oh, Jesus. She looks at me, eyes hollow, gaze piercing, and the boring into my very soul, like a set of chains to keep my whole body still. There are no shadows or whispers this time, only a plea, a hum low and indistinct, compelling me, beckoning me, intent on dragging me into the void beyond the glass. I don't dare move. My heart hammers against my ribs, each beat, every thump screaming at me to look away and make a run for it. But I can't. I couldn't. All of my limbs feel heavy, while my own breathing strains in the face of her calls. Oh, fucking that, that shit fucks me up. Her mouth is stretched in a grin, wide and unpleasant. The panic building up on my chest forced me to take a tentative step back. I try not to stare at the decaying flesh. The blood streaming from gaping wounds in her arms and her nailless fingers. I don't want this. Not like this. Not after I got what I want for Papa. <sighs> Fuck. Oh, that scared me. Rage. There's only hatred and bitterness. This is the very notion of turning away from her is an offense in itself. Fuck, dude. Before I know it, I'm stumbling backwards, my own throat hoarse from the screams I didn't even notice already coming out of my mouth. The back of my feet catches on a loose end, so they me sprawling on the ground. The resulting plane completely jolts me out of the gaze burning in my mind. For a little while, my surroundings appear unfamiliar until Becca's face swims into my vision. The look of concern is on her face, and her hands are gripping my arms tight. Even Zack appears beside himself with worry, while he stands behind her, acting as a shield against a small crowd of onlookers already forming around us. My mouth opens and closes, but nothing comes out. The words refuse to form. On impulse, I sneak a swift glance at the display window. She's gone. Yet the foreboding feeling hasn't left me. My hands are shaking as I push myself off the ground. My weakened limbs rely solely on reflex and muscle memory. Something icy has made its home in the pit of my stomach. I want to throw up anything, get the wretched sensation out. Attempt to, attempt, I attempt to smile to put her at ease, but it only comes off as a grimace. Gently, I push her hands off my shoulders. My knees are still trembling, but I can stand. Leave. Leave me. Stay away. Away. The humidity is stifling. Everyone's staring, stares are unnerving, and Becca and Zach's concerns are suffocating. I don't want to be here. No more. I break into a run. Wish I hadn't left my bed this morning. Here with... Only the occasional drips of water on the sink and the whirring of the fan blades keep me company. It's easy to fall into a cycle of negative thinking. But even with the clutter to keep me company, the room still feels a whole lot bigger than usual. 
I'm at my knees closer as a group passes outside, loud, so loud. If only there was a way to tune everything out to keep my head from replaying every image, every sound for her screams, her awkward gaze she reaches for me, her bone-chilling smile, her pleas for enough. That's enough. A shiver passes over me, though it's not from the hair still hanging damp against my back, nor the draft that enters the room from the windows I left wide open. Oh, there it is. I wish I could just move it. Funny how an ordinary-looking piece of paper can bring this much trouble. An impulse to throw it away or rip its pieces is still there. I can easily do it, but after that, what? Will she leave me? What about those people who have already seen it? Will they be okay? And it's, this certainly gnaws at me. Knowing that she's real, might also, might also go after the people I care about. I just wish someone would listen. Believe me. The abrupt break in the silence nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Blindly, I fish out my phone from under the mess of papers and cushions where I've carelessly thrown it before taking a shower hours ago. Zach's name flashes brightly on the screen. Is he calling because of this afternoon? Frankly, it's the last thing I want to discuss, but I did leave the two of them there without saying anything. Knowing Zach, I bet he's worried. I pause. I don't recall with making plans for Zach for the weekend. Oh, right. I did say that, but I didn't think he'd actually go through with the trouble, especially after what happened with this film. I just forgot how kind Zach can be. It'll still go up. Yeah, it just keeps going up. <laughs> Ain't no problem. Oh, I already know you said that. Trying to get me to talk. Normally I tell him I'm fine, say so a few simple reassurances, but their mind's at ease. Now, now nothing will form. I can't bring myself to say anything. He seems to have sensed my hesitation because he immediately changed the subject. Hangs up before I can thank him. The busy tone, the muffled, echoes through the receiver. No one is saying this will work. Even I'm doubtful it will. But right now, I'll take anything. Anything to get out of this nightmare. Alright, guys. If you can't see me, well, let's see. Let me do that. Yeah, you guys can. Well, you can see me over there in the corner of the screen. Yeah, you see. All right, guys. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Come on. God damn it.